All right, I'm going to go ahead and kill the music, <laughs> which is what I've been streaming through in between sessions. Um, so I'm R. Tyler, just in case anyone comes on. I'm not Mr. Jenkins. This is not what he sounds like. Um, but I wanted to, to sort of have an ad hoc session. Um, Jesse, I don't know if you've met Martin before. Um, Martin's been you know, working quite a bit with workflow. Um, I've also been playing a lot with workflow. I thought it would be, um, you know, really nice to have, you know, a 30-minute discussion about, you know, what's there right now, what's working well, what's not working well, uh, etc. So, Merton, do you want to just, you know, talk about kind of some of the stuff you're doing? Um, hello. Yes, yes. Um, my name is Martin Danjou and I've been using Jenkins for um, maybe three or four years. And recently I was doing uh, more complex job setups and I, on, on IRC people recommended that I use the workflow. So I've been learning it since uh, the beginning of uh, the summer. And uh, as I'm learning it, you know, I, I, I try many different things that end up not working or being the wrong thing to try and so that uh, in the end I have you know a couple of questions and and that's that's it that's pretty much it um, I'm, I'm not building anything Java or uh, software related but I'm, I'm building code so mm, I guess that's the background information Hey Jesse, would you mind uh, introducing yourself just for the uh, for the group as well? For listeners, sure. Uh, my name is Jesse Glick. I've been well, I've been somehow involved in Hudson or Jenkins almost from the start, although not all that actively. Um, I've been working at CloudBees since mid 2012, and during that time, I've been working heavily on all sorts of things related to Jenkins Core and various plugins. And with respect to workflow, this is a project that Kosuke and I started. When did we start this? Uh, March of 2014. And I've been spending a lot of my time working on it since then. So I think cool. that's, that's enough. If you if you want to start talking about specifics, I'd say one question that um, I know Martin and I've seen a couple others ask um, is kind of like how you know how much Groovy can we use in workflow? Like I know Martin was defining classes. I've I've seen some other people start defining classes inside of uh, workflow scripts and things like that. I'm curious what the intention, uh, like how full featured of a Groovy environment is workflow supposed to be? Yeah, that's a good question and something that's not really documented very clearly at the moment, I think. Um, in general, you can use Groovy syntax. There's no, there's no particular white list of things that are allowed um, since workflow does um, it does embed the full Groovy runtime and use the regular Groovy compiler. So in principle, it would support whatever stuff Groovy itself supports. There are, and, and that does include things like defining your own classes and, and, that sort of, and using closures and that sort of thing. There are specific gotchas. So the, the, main, um, the main thing that people run into is that any anything that's stored even as local variable state in your flow needs to be serializable. And the reason for that is that workflow builds are intended to keep on running even after Jenkins gets restarted, so potentially days or weeks long. Um, and for that to happen, everything that happens throughout the course of the script has to be able to be saved to disk and then reloaded again. So. You can use custom classes if you want to. You just have to mark them serializable. Um, and basically, that means that you can store 
data structures in them, but you can't store things like open network sockets or something like that. Um, generally, any kind of heavy-duty computation or or things that would do I.O. or things like that, those are things that should happen as forked processes on a slave machine. So you'd use the SH or BAT steps to run those things. So the idea is that the Groovy script itself would just be for orchestration of things that Jenkins itself needs to know about. It's not a replacement for doing scripting or running build tools or something like that. that would probably the other most commonly encountered issue that we don't yet have a fix for is that if you call methods that take a closure and the method definition is part of Groovy itself rather than your program, it won't work. We haven't figured out how to solve that yet. So Groovy idioms that are something of the form collection dot each or collect or something like that would just have to be rewritten into the you know sort of boring C style loop rather than using the closure syntax. Does that start to answer your question? For me, yeah. Um, Martin might have more more that he's curious about or, or anybody else on the call. I just wanted to I figured that would be a good uh, icebreaker. So anybody else that, that wants to talk about workflow, feel free to jump in. And uh, one other thing, um, in the in the chat group chat thing, I put a link to this Etherpad. Um, so I'll be taking some notes from this and other sessions with links um, in this Etherpad. And then afterwards, I'll try to make sure that anything that needs to get updated as far as documentation goes uh, does get get updated. Okay. Were there other kinds of issues that you ran into that seemed like stumbling blocks or that or documentation was missing? You there still, Martin? Alexander wants a demo. Let me, um, um, I don't actually have a demo ready. Um, I know um, Patrick's on the call as well. If either, you know, Jesse, you or Patrick has uh, a quick workflow demo, um, I'll go pick up the, uh, the issues that Martin posted this morning from the dev list. Um, I could probably start up like the the stock demo that's bundled in the system if people haven't seen it. I can sort of walk through the different important elements of it if that's useful. Let me see if I can get that started. I don't have it prepared right away, but I can get it running in a minute. Okay. Right. I'm also, uh, I'll put in the notes, Jesse's done a, a good YouTube session or two, um, and I'll put those in the notes after I dig them up. I'm just trying to get a demo started. It'll, it'll take a couple of minutes for it to fire up. Since it looks like my Docker daemon is cold and needs to be warmed up. <laughs> um, so uh, Martin's having some microphone trouble. Um, one of the uh, questions that he did have that got posted to the mailing list um, was about um, like if I can summarize for you, Martin, since you and I have been talking a lot about this, um, a lot of what Martin's been been working on orients itself around the load step, 
So like loading another Groovy script into the workflow. Um, the one issue that he linked from this mailing list post in the group chat is a about jobs getting in or workflows getting uh, into an unkillable state, and then I know the other one was um, questions about using workflow from SCM with the load script and like where things should be sourced from uh, when using workflow from SCM. Um, right. I think so I summarized that correctly. <laughs> okay. I don't know about the things going into an unkillable state. I mean, that's a bug somewhere, but. I mean, if there's if there's some known way to reproduce that, then I can fix whatever the problem is. But I don't know offhand. That would be. I I think um I think Martin's use case in the uh, in the Jenkins dev list I think that is a reproducible thing. I'll take a, a note from this and I'll make sure that this gets filed as a bug then and that the repro steps works. Yeah, anything with the easy steps to reproduce. Um, generally something that's fixable pretty straightforward. Uh, let's speak. Martin says, I did not know if the problem was because classes were not allowed or because I had made a mistake. Yeah, without... So, so he has a, let's see, a class. I mean, in this case... He's defining a class. Probably it needs to be marked implement serializable. That's one possible problem with that script. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the, the actual problem that was encountered or not. Again, if that's reproducible, then do something to either make it work or make the, make the build fail cleanly at some point, I don't know offhand what the issue would be. There. So, let's see. So, as far as loading scripts from SCM, there are a few different choices depending on exactly how you want to work. Things that are available now, and we have some plans for extensions for this in the future. So, so the simplest mode is just that your script is typed entirely into the Jenkins job configuration screen. Um, there is uh, another option that sort of gives a, a simple convenience mode for a common case, which is that you want to load the script from a particular source code repository and run it from there. So that's the the script from SCM option. So if you select that, then every time the build runs, it's going to check out the latest version of that source code repository, load the script from there, and run it as is. So that's that's suitable for, for some cases. Um, I think for most, for most common cases, the best option is probably what was introduced recently, which is multi-branch support. And that means that you check in a script called Jenkins file as part of your source code repository. Um, Jenkins automatically builds any appropriate branches from that repository. And you can use uh, a one-line command called checkout SCM that checks out the rest of the sources from that repository at the same revision as your workflow script. So if most of what you're doing, or all of what you're doing, is contained in this one repository, then this is the most straightforward way to define the script for it and to have access to the corresponding, the other sources as part of the repository. So this is available with the workflow multi-branch plugin. And I can actually get screen sharing to work. I can actually show this running here. See, so that should have. Right, so that should be showing a Jenkins screen. Let me make that a little bit bigger. How's about that? So in this case, we have a, a job called CD, and the configuration for it just says that. Um, 
I want to look for any branches in the following Git repository. And there's some other there's some other items on the config form, but that's really the everything that Jenkins really needs to know. And so we have this this Git repository here as part of the demo that um, it has a Maven project, actually has a couple of Maven projects and various kinds of source code and, and this and that. Um, and the workflow script is called Jenkins file. So this is both the identification of a buildable branch and the actual instructions for building the branch. So this is the complete um, workflow script for building sources from it. And you can see that one of the first things it does is it grabs a slave called node. Um, so that's this node block here. Everything that runs inside this block runs on a slave. And checkout SCM here means that uh, you would like Jenkins to check out this complete repository at the same revision that the, um, that the Jenkins file itself is loaded from. So that's sort of the, the typical configuration. And if you browse to the CD project, it sort of looks like a folder, and you get one child project per active branch in the repository. So right now we just have a master branch because we haven't done any kind of branching development. And so the master branch is a complete job with its own history. And in this case, we have uh, one build that started here. So it's it's been running our, this is sort of boilerplate stuff at the, at the top where um, workflow is just finding the Jenkins file that's supposed to build. And then it starts running your workflow script. So it goes straight into a, a development stage. It says that we're getting a new slave and we're getting workspace on that slave to run on. And then the checkout step is where we check out our project sources onto the slave in an accessible location where you can do things like run builds on them. Here, I'm, most of what I'm doing is running the Maven build tool. Um, and this this is run for a while, and right now it's uh, it's actually paused for input. So you can see that it's asking for interaction as part of the console log. Um, this is also available from the the build itself. You can see that's asking whether you want to proceed or abort the current staged version of the app. Um, and there's also a um, it's possible to see a list of all of the workflow steps that have been run as part of this build. So it's done a, hey, Jesse. a bunch of different things. Yep. When when things are paused for that input, like that that proceed button thing, mm -hmm. what's what's executing? Like what resources? I'm. I mean, I kind of know where to find this for for documentation, but could you talk a little bit about how? Like this actually consumes resources or allocates resources on the Jenkins cluster. Sure. So while it's paused for input, it's not consuming anything on the Jenkins cluster. It's not. It's really just paused. It's not doing anything else. So we can see if we um if we schedule another build of the master branch. So we'll just do a a manual rebuild without source code changes. Um, then you go to the Jenkins dashboard. Um, you'll s sometimes you'll see some things appear under master. This is when it's actually running some groovy code. Most of the time, you'll only see this actual executor for a this is a real slave machine with a numbered executor slot. Um, only when it has this this stuff running on the slave, that means that it's actually using an executor slot on a slave and it has that workspace locked and it's potentially running some external commands or doing something, doing some real work. So you can see right now it's um, it's running Maven, so it's going through some, some Maven tests. At the moment it's actually um, it's actually running two parallel branches, quicker tests and longer tests, and it's using 
two distinct slaves to run. Here we have a mock slave eight and nine. It's using two slaves to run tests simultaneously. So we can see that we have the same workflow build is running on two slaves right now. Um, there, one of them just dropped off. That means one set of tests just finished. Um, while it's paused for input, you should see nothing here because it'll, it'll basically no longer be using a slave for anything while it's waiting for input. Um, and so that means that all of the executors will drop off of the executor widget. So now it's just sleep. So a question from, uh, from Owen in the sidebar is just, you mentioned that um, there's sort of a project that's going to be set up for each active branch in the source repository. What, like, what defines active branch here? Uh, just anything that would be listed in the in, if you type the git branch command, for example. Um, that's a, assuming that you use the uh, default configuration for this git branch source. You can also ask it to um, you know, only pick branches with certain names or something like that. By default, it just looks for any open branches. So if you if you merge a branch and then delete it, then it it's gone from the list and the corresponding branch project goes away automatically. It's also possible, um, newly introduced feature is that, I think I have it, do I have it loaded here? I do not have it installed currently, but if you go to the available tab, um, and install the branch source plugins. That should be I'm sure if I need to it's asking for a credentials plugin update, but it probably doesn't actually matter. Um, if you did that, you might need to restart to get this to work actually. If you did that, then you also get another option which is um, creating a single folder that automatically creates multi-branch projects for each matching repository in a whole GitHub organization. So there's a there's a general API for defining kinds of SCMs, like SCM repositories. Um, so we have Git, Subversion, and Mercurial at least are currently supported. There might be some others. Um, and then there's also an API for automatically discovering repositories that could be built. So that's if you if you click on GitHub organization, that would that would allow you to. Type it. I don't actually have this uh, set up at the moment. I think because I would have to enter some GitHub credentials or something. But I have a separate webinar where I show. This, this system, but essentially you'd add your GitHub credentials and then it would automatically create a multi-branch project for each um, repository that had a Jenkins file in it. Um, answer a question? It certainly did for me. <laughs> I was curious, uh, I don't know if you've got to run in eight minutes, Jesse. I was curious if you could, if you also had something you wanted to ask people here, like as like the dude who's really responsible for workflow, um, right. if there's stuff that you want to get feedback on or, or you know, ideas that we could help you with, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think I, I don't have a hard cutoff, but. Um, yeah, what's what's most valuable, I think, is just information on what kinds of things people are doing with it, and and especially what parts of the documentation are missing or outdated or misleading in various ways. So we haven't we haven't done a very good job yet on introductory documentation. There's a tutorial which goes over. Um, certain aspects of, of setting up basic workflows step by step with, with examples at each stage, but there are a lot of different use cases that that doesn't cover. So we'd really like to know what kinds of things people 
would, would like to know more about. So, for example, one thing, some people use the build step very heavily, which is used to build other jobs in the same Jenkins system, usually waiting for the result or whatever. Um, and that's not currently covered by the tutorial. So there's, there's some documentation for, um, as part of the product itself, but it's fairly low level. It doesn't sort of tell you what to do with that step in context. So, I mean, in general, if you click on snippet generator, um, you can get sort of an inline reference for how to how to do particular kinds of things. So, Jesse, one of the the problems that Martin and I have been working through, uh, I'd say, towards the end of last week, mm -hmm. is you know when you when you use workflow and you just have workflow from SCM. Uh, mm -hmm. Setting aside the multi-branch stuff for now, and yep. you have workflow from SCM. When you know, if your job doesn't check out, you know, do a node block and then check out SCM, or you know, do something to get source code mm -hmm. uh, inside of the context of the workflow, it doesn't have access to that source code. Um, and when you start to add like the the global commons library or whatever whatever that's called for workflow steps, it starts to become very confusing where like how many different source repositories one might need in a more advanced setup like Martin to have you know workflows that are pulling in um, you know doing workflow from SCM and then your commons library thing which would have Presumably, right now, it would be backed by SCM as well. And then, you know, where else you might want to uh, be loading workflow steps from. Um, I think it, it, it's just a little confusing. Um, I'm probably totally butchering your question, Martin. <laughs> um, but it's very confusing which uh, or how many SCM repositories one needs to use like all of workflow in concert together for a project, if that makes sense. Yeah, it depends on whether you have, the main question is whether you have pieces that you want to reuse across projects. So if the, if your workflow script is basically one script that, that you can just write, um, then the most straightforward thing is just make a multi-branch project, write it in the Jenkins file, and you're done. Um, if you want to reuse some pieces of logic from different places, so there is a there is a global library plugin that you can use that lets you uh, define some pieces that you can basically install in Jenkins globally. That's the name, um, and reuse from various scripts. You can't. There's not really a good way of uh, versioning the contents of that. So you can keep it in your own Git repository and periodically deploy it to Jenkins. But that's sort of the, the limit of it. Um, if you really want everything to be taken directly from your own source control systems, then you would usually use load steps to check things out and, and load the pieces that you need from particular places. There's also a workflow remote loader plugin um, that sort of automate some of the boilerplate of getting a slave node to check out git sources and load a workflow definition from that and make it available to your main script. So it sort of that make, gives you a little higher level step. So Martin is asking, why can't we use the load step from the workflow script from SCM checkout? Uh, you can. I think what Martin was running into, and this may be related to his post on the uh, the Jenkins user list, is just getting um, getting the load step and his Jenkins file thing working properly together. So I think there might just be a, a quick demo update that you know I need to do or, or you need to do to make it clear how things work um, with that. Is, if correct me if I'm wrong, Martin. You're not using multi-branch workflows right now. You're working with just the normal workflow. Tip, 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 tip. 
Single branch, he says. Single branch, so, yeah. You know, whether you're using workflow so, script or workflow script from SCM, it doesn't matter. At any point, if you if you run the load step, it it loads the named file and and runs it. Then that that file could have sort of top level statements that immediately do something, or usually it has a bunch of um, I think, method definitions that you can use. Later. I think where the confusion might be is. When when you say that to me, I think of just putting in a workflow script load. But I'm I'm a, I think that might be wrong in that you mean a load step inside of a node block where the SCM like there's a checkout SCM or a get step already defined, correct? Like yeah. load is not just going to know what to take the to take the file from outside of that node closure, right? Yeah, load is just a step that looks for a file that you name in the current workspace and loads it as group. Ah, OK. I think so, the, so you have the to get that file from getting the workspace. Somewhere. Yeah, so you have to get that file from somewhere to begin with. So the sort of the simple so the tutorial gives a few a few idioms that that you can use. Um, this is it still visible, I think so. So this idiom you can use to uh, grab a workspace just long enough to load, to check out and load a particular groovy file, and then you can reuse the definition later, and so on. Um, but there is uh, there is a plugin that makes this easier, which I should probably link to from here. So that's the Workflow Remote Loader plugin. Um, which basically does this boilerplate for you, so that you just say, um, "I want to load workflow function definitions from the following Git repository," and it does the does the checkout of that workspace and loading for you. Has the uh, remote loader plugin been released to the update center yet? Uh, as far as I know. If it's not, I think it's not. I'm not sure if it's using Jira. I think it's the remote load plugin, if I remember right. Yeah. The remote file loader plugin. So this gives some, some basic usage. It doesn't do anything you couldn't do already with the load step, but it provides a sort of a higher level syntax for it. You can say, by a loader from Git, give it some uh, Git location and credentials, and then and then you have a function ready. So we would like to provide some provide something that works a little bit more like the uh, a global library plugin at some point in the future that can also work with external SCMs. You just have to come up with the right, right design for letting a workflow specify, sort of in a abstract terms, which library it wants to use in which version, and then have Jenkins know how to concretely get that file and load it. That sort of thing. Martin is asking. There has to be two checkouts. Um, there doesn't have to be, but that's common. So in the tutorial, for example, you can you can see that, that you could do all of the. Um, I mean, the the load step will actually run the script that it loads. So if you're, I mean, if you're happy working on in that same workspace, then you can have it run stuff in line. But if you have something that's shared between multiple repositories, you would probably want to um, just have it load that library segment and then use it in another workspace. Yeah. And Martin says, we don't have access to the internal workspace that uses to check out workflow. 
from SCM. Yeah, that's correct. So workflow from SCM option is basically just a shortcut. Um, all it does is the same thing you would you would do using um, this kind of idiom with the load step. It basically just creates a, a temporary throwaway workspace and does a uh, SCM checkout long enough to load a script from it and then continues with your flow. Mm. Well, aside from Martin and occasionally Owen, it's a mostly quiet room. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm glad you had the uh, the workflow demo ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be running. Um. Yeah, by the way, so right now you can see that uh, there's nothing in the executor queue, so Jenkins is idle, even though, in fact, um, master build number two is... The flow build is running, but it's just paused here waiting for input. So at this point, it's not consuming any executor or consuming a thread or anything on Jenkins. It's just Jenkins is recording that it's paused here, but that's about it. And you can restart Jenkins at some at whatever point you like during this flow, and it should come back to the same spot that it was at. Does one of these uh, one of these workflows you have the multi-branch workflows have multiple branches that you could uh, go to? Uh, so let's see. so this is it doesn't right now, but if I um, let me see if I can. Oh, and I'm not sure what you're expecting. It's <laughs> it's actually pretty straightforward, but yeah. Here, I'll just make just a control. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to create a new branch in this repository and make a little edit to the Jenkins file or something like that. So. Uh, I'm going to do checkout dash b feature and make it. So, oh, and the build history, like when the multi branch plugin's really going um, and you've got multiple branches, the multi branch workflow just appears as a folder in the UI. And then each branch just looks like a separate job, except you didn't have to be bothered with creating that separate job, which yeah. is quite handy. So, here um, I've I've pushed a new branch. Um, this is just a plain old git branch source, and I, it doesn't have any kind of web hooks or any anything like that set up. It's just a, actually just a local, super dumb git server. Um, so I'm going to manually re-index it. Otherwise, you can. What's a bug? Oh, that's a bug on 1609.1. It doesn't do that on 1609.2. Um, but if you look at the log file, you see that it reran branch indexing, and so it it loaded this repo in localhost, and it says that it found this this new branch I pushed called feature, and it said it met criteria, and the criteria was just that it have a file called Jenkins file in it. So that's enough for it to be considered buildable. Uh, master branch still meets it. So that automatically created this new... Um, this new project called Feature. And this will run for a minute. And the only thing, well, let's see. Um, so the only thing that I changed in this was that I added one line to the Jenkins file. So I've changed how my workflow script runs in this branch. Um, so that's a, in a minute or two, this will finish running. You'll see it, an extra message at the end of it. So, Jesse, is there a way with the multi-branch right now? You mentioned earlier that when you delete a branch, the project goes away. What happens to the build and test history from that branch? Does that just go away entirely as well? Yeah, that just gets deleted. Now, if you want to keep the branches, branch projects around for a while, then you can edit this stuff. So it's a lot like, it's a lot like the artifact and build rotator for build history, so you can say, 
they want to keep branches around for one week or or I want to keep the last three closed branches around or something like that so that if you if you want them retained for a little while you can do that or of course you can just uncheck that and then they'll just stay around either way so the default is just to delete them as soon as as soon as they disappear from the repository and that's customizable so here if I proceed with feature branch then in a minute you should see a little message at the end of the script. Yeah, so Owen says that they need Jenkins history for 90 days. Yeah, so you could just set the set the branch to stick around for 90 days. So here all I've done is I've added a echo statement to the end of the workflow in this branch. So when we run this branch project, it will run this extra statement. Uh, the useful thing here is that you can make changes to your Jenkins file that match changes to the rest of your source code. So if you um, if you want to prototype turning on, I don't know, Cobertura as part of your project, um, if the Cobertura publisher is available, or something like that, then you can make that change to your project's build script, actually run the Cobertura tool as part of its build lifecycle, and make the change to the Jenkins file to publish that report into Jenkins as part of the same commit and do them both on a topic branch that you, that you run. So your master, so the configuration of your master branch is not touched while you do this. So that's a good way of basically prototyping changes to your Jenkins job configuration without committing yourself to them. If something goes wrong, then just that branch project is broken. Your master branch is still blue. Because these each have their own distinct build histories. So Jesse Martin's asking, uh, he's got some questions about how staging works, particularly with preemption. Um, mm -hmm. says the documentation says that uh, older builds will simply exit early if they are preempted, but is there a config to never preempt a stage? Right, um, so, the sta so specifically when you have the concurrency on a stage, um, that means that if um, that only one build can be running in that stage at a given time. Um, so if there are newer builds that come in while well, a build is already in the stage, then they're just going to wait for the original one to finish. And preemption means that if you've got two new builds that come in um, while you're still waiting for the first one to finish, then the second one gets automatically aborted. The idea being that you only want, you only care about the most recent build anyway, so it's only going to let um, the most recent eligible one through the gate. There are some RFEs open for alternate behaviors for, and, um, yeah, it means, yeah, it kills the older build, it, it marks it as a blue. That's right. Um, there are some RFEs open for alternate behaviors of stage concurrency, so probably the the main request is, um, it's a little bit hard to summarize quickly here, but basically to allow the other build, to allow the other builds to come in um, but be aborted only when we exit the stage. So um, another related RFP is to be able to just lock a critical resource like some test database or something that you only have one of um, to be able to lock that so that only one build at a time can get access to that but without really paying attention to where in the build you are. So if you, if you don't care about the, the sequence of stages or anything like that, you just want to prevent two builds from clobbering one another. Um, that's an RFE in the for workflow compatibility in the locks and latch it, locks and latches plugin, I think, or lockable resources plugin or something like that. So that's well known. 
RFE in the list. It's, so it's lock, uh, workflow support for resource locking, lockable resources plugin. Something people frequently want. So every, everybody's aware there's 15 minutes before Stephen's uh, plug-in development workshop. Um, so if you've got last questions for Jesse, it'd be good to, to or not just Jesse, I guess anybody else around workflow, um, feel free to chime in. So Martin was asking for a list of all of the RFEs and bug reports. So, I mean, there's, there's too many to... To walk through them or anything like that. These, this particular Jira query is linked to from the workflow homepage. So this link here, um, Jira, this gives all of the open issues that are either in workflow plugin itself or in other plugins, but they're marked with the workflow label. So that's just the, the special signal that it's, you know, either a RFE for integration of that other plugin into workflow or some kind of issue that particularly or only affects workflow builds that, that people using workflow would want to know about. So, yeah, Are there Andrew's any plans to open source uh, to open source the workflow stage view plugin? This might be a good Patrick question as opposed to a Jesse question if you're paying attention, Patrick. Uh, yeah, it's there is actually uh, so there is an issue for this. In, okay. So if you go to choose filed against Jenkins 2.0, um, then there's yeah, provide better workflow visualization out of the box. So currently, CloudBees um, sells a graphical stage view. So this is a view that appears for the job as a whole and shows a shows a sequence of builds going through particular stages and has little quick links to to do things like get artifacts or respond to input or something like that. Um, and there's a proposal on the table to open source this and include this in the, in the uh, OSS workflow offering. So for the uh, for the YouTube video, um, Patrick said that th yes, this should be open source as part of Jenkins 2.0. Um, yep. I believe that Kosuke talked about it in his initial Jenkins 2.0 presentation. Yep. Um, and if you just go to um, jenkinsci.org slash content Jenkin slash jenkins dash two zero dash proposals, there's a link to all of the proposals. And I'll put that in the sidebar in the notes um, for posterity. Martin's asking for the two is on the stage preemption enhancement. So, let me, um, so there was a lockable resources plugin. So let's see where is that? There's that guy, and there is also. This one is frequently requested. There's actually the either pad here. Yep. There's actually a patch for this, but without test, and so it's installed at that point. I haven't gotten a chance to work on it recently. Those are the two major ones on the topic. Uh, 
This has been... I don't know about everybody else, but <laughs> Jesse, this has been awesome. Thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. Any, Very final, helpful. any final questions? Or anything that we missed in the sidebar? Quick question about 27039. Type quickly, Martin. Yep. <laughs> There's sort of a long discussion here. We can skip. We skip down to this part of the discussion. So to prevent waiting jobs from being preempted, um, yeah, that's that's another sub RFE lurking in here. Although most of the time when people, yes, all in queue would be executed. Most of the time when people ask for this, they're actually asking for the lockable resources RFE, so the 30269. Um, but there are potentially some use cases for another mode that's, that's discussed here. So want to have all of them run in run in sequence without preemption. Also, potential use cases. So, yep. oh, good. So, okay. if you um, if you're experimenting with the workflow plugin and you go to the issues issues.jkci.org, the component that you should file tickets under um, is just workflow dash plugin. Um, Jesse, do you think it's better for, for people to post feedback and, and further questions on the user's mailing list or on the dev mailing list? Uh, I, don't, I don't have a strong opinion. I, I usually follow the Stack Overflow tag for, <laughs> for sort of concrete how-to questions. You know, try okay. doing this, but it doesn't work, or is there a way to do such and such? Oh, usually we stack over and in the uh, if you just go to github.com slash Jenkins CI slash workflow dash plugin there's links to the stack overflow there's links to Jira and the change log and the users list yep. um, that you see on Jesse's screen right now um, yeah this is this has been phenomenal thanks a lot Jesse sure my pleasure thank you everyone for attending <laughs>